problems. There's our milk, there's our carton. In that is nearly as much sugar as one of your favorite cans of fizzy pop, and they're having two a day. So, let me just show you. We've got one kid here having, you know, eight tablespoons of sugar a day. You know, there's your week. There's your month. And I've took the liberty of putting in just the five years of elementary school sugar just from milk. Now, I don't know about you guys, but judging the circumstances, right, any judge in the whole world would look at the statistics and the evidence and they would find any government of old guilty of child abuse. That's my belief. Now, if I came up here, and I wish I could come up here today, and hang a cure for AIDS or cancer, you'd be fighting and scrambling to get to me. This, all this bad news, is preventable. That's the good news. It's very, very preventable. So, let's just think about, we've got a problem here, we need to reboot. Okay, so, in my world, what do we need to do? Here's the thing, right? Um, it cannot just come from one source. To reboot and make real tangible change, real change, so that I can look you in the white of the eyes and say, in 10 years' time, the history of your children's lives, happiness, and let's not forget, you're clever if you eat well, you know, you're going to live longer, uh, all of that stuff, it will look different, okay? So, supermarkets, where else do you shop so religiously? Week in, week out. How much money do you spend in your life in a supermarket? Love them. They just sell us what we want, all right. They owe us to put a food ambassador in every major supermarket. They need to help us shop. They need to show us how to cook quick, tasty, seasonal uh, meals for people that are busy. This is not expensive. It is done in some, and it needs to be done across the board in America soon and quick. The big brands, you know, the food brands, need to put food education at the heart of their businesses. I know, easier said than done, it's the future. It's the only way. Fast food. Um, with the fast food industry, um, you know, it's very competitive. I've had loads of secret papers and dealings with fast food res you know, restaurants. I know how they do it. I mean, basically, they've weaned us on to these hits of sugar, salt and fat and X, Y and Z, and everyone loves them, right? So these guys are going to be part of the, the solution, but we need to get the government to work with all of the fast food purveyors and the restaurant industry and over a five, six, seven year period, wean us off the extreme amounts of fat, sugar, fat, and all the other non-food ingredients. Now, also, back to the sort of big brands, labeling, I said earlier, is an absolute farce and has got to be sorted. Okay, school. Obviously in schools, we owe it to them to make sure those 180 days of the year, from that little precious age of four to 18, 20, 24, whatever, they need to be cooked proper, fresh food from local girls on site, okay? There needs to be a new standard of fresh, proper food for your children, yeah? <laughs> Under the circumstances, it's profoundly important that every single American child leaves school knowing how to cook 10 recipes that will save their life. Life skills. <laughs> that means that they can be students, young parents, uh, and, and be able to sort of duck and dive around the basics of cooking, no matter what recession hits them next time. If you can cook, recession money doesn't matter. If you can cook, time doesn't matter. The workplace, we haven't really talked about it. You know, it's now time for corporate responsibility to really look at what they feed or make available to their staff. The staff are the mums and dads of America's children. Marissa, her father died in her hand. I think she'd be quite happy if corporate America could start feeding their staff properly. Definitely, they shouldn't be left out. Let's go back to the home. Now, look, if we do all this stuff, and we can, it's so achievable. You can care and be commercial, absolutely. But the home needs to start passing on cooking again, for sure, for sure. Pass it on is a philosophy. And for me, it's quite romantic, but it's about if one, t if one person teaches three people how to cook something, you know, and they teach three of their mates, that only has to repeat itself 25 times, and that's the whole population of America, 
Romantic, yes. But most importantly, it's about trying to get people to realize that every one of your individual efforts makes a difference. We've got to put back what's been lost. Bear, and I'm 11 years old. I came here today to talk about what's wrong with our food system. First of all, I would like to say that I'm really amazed how easily kids are led to believe all the marketing and advertising on TV, at public schools, and pretty much everywhere else you look. It seems to me like corporations are always trying to get kids, like me, to get their parents to buy stuff that really isn't good for us or the planet. Little kids especially are attracted by colorful packaging and plastic toys. I must admit, I used to be one of them. I also used to think that all of our food came from these happy little farms where pigs rolled in mud and cows grazed on grass all day. What I discovered was this is not true. I began to look into this stuff on the internet, in books, and in documentary films, in my travels with my family. I discovered the dark side of the industrialized food system. First, there's genetically engineered seeds and organisms. That is when a seed is manipulated in a laboratory to do something not intended by nature, like taking the DNA of a fish and putting it into the DNA of a tomato. Yuck. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I like fish and tomatoes, but this is just creepy. <laughs> the, seeds, the seeds are then planted, then grown. The food they produce have been proven to cause cancer and other problems in lab animals. And people have been eating food produced this way since the 1990s, and most folks don't even know they exist. Did you know rats that genetically engineered corn had developed signs of liver and kidney toxicity? These include kidney inflammation and lesions and decreased kidney weight. Yet almost all the corn we eat has been altered genetically in some way. And let me tell you, corn is in everything. And don't even get me started on the confined animal feeding operations called CAFOs. <laughs> Conventional farmers use chemical fertilizers made from, troll, made from fossil fuels that they mix with the dirt to make plants grow. They do this because they've stripped the soil from all nutrients, from growing the same crop over and over again. Next, more harmful chemicals are sprayed on fruits and vegetables, like pesticides and herbicides, to kill weeds and bugs. When it rains, these chemicals seep into the ground or run off into our waterways, poisoning our water too. Then they irradiate our food, trying to make it last longer, so it can travel thousands of miles from where it's grown to the supermarkets. So I ask myself, how can I change? How can I change these things? This is what I found out. I discovered that there's a movement for a better way. Now, a while back, I wanted to be an NFL football player. I decided that I'd rather be an organic farmer instead. That way... <laughs> Thank you. And that way, I can have a greater impact on the world. I learned this guy named Joel Salatin. They call him a lunatic farmer because he grows against the system. Since I'm homeschooled, I want to go hear him speak one day. This man, this lunatic farmer, doesn't use any pesticides, herbicides, or genetically modified seeds. And so for that, he's called crazy by the system. I want you to know that we can all make a difference by making different choices, by buying our food directly from local farmers or neighbors who we know in real life. I'll, some people say organic or local food is more expensive, but is it really? With all these things I've been learning about the food system, it seems to me that we can either pay the farmer or we can pay the hospital. I know... <laughs> now, I know, one, I know definitely which one I would choose. I want you to know that there are farms out there, like Bill Keener and Sequatchie Coast Farms in Tennessee whose cows do eat grass and whose pigs do roll in the mud just like I thought. Sometimes I go to Bill's farm and volunteer so I can see up close and personal where the meat I eat comes from. I want you to know that I believe kids will eat fresh vegetables and good food if they know more about it and where it really comes from. I want you to know that there are farmers markets in every community popping up. I want you to know that me, my brother and sister actually like eating baked kale chips. I try to share this everywhere I go. Not too long ago, my uncle said that he offered my six-year-old cousin cereal. 
He asked if he wanted organic toasted O's or the sugar-coated flakes. You know, the one with the big striped cartoon character on the front? My little cousin told his dad that he would rather have the organic toasted O cereal because Burke said he shouldn't eat sparkly cereal. <laughs> and that, my friends, is how we can make a difference, one kid at a time. So next time you're at the grocery store, think local. Choose organic, know your farm, and know your food. Thank you. Yeah.